Hello and welcome everybody to a new Sabian Masterclass. Today, we're very happy to have live from London, David, the Cardinal Cadona with us. Hello, David. Hey, everyone. Hey, how are you? How are you, Christian? Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very humble for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining. So, David, um, topic today is powerhouse drumming. Can you give us That's some right. more insight about it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Actually, there's a few people that were asking me about powerhouse drumming. It's like, what is the definition of powerhouse drumming? I'll, I'll be very basic. You know, power, of course, comes with power and, and how you, you know, you play the kid, you know, and, and that's one of my main things I've always had. My mom complained a lo loads of times when I used to play at home because I used to play very loud. So I always had this, this power, this, you know, passion and drive to play drums. So the power comes from that. You know, like, a, you know, and the powerhouse actually definition is like, you know, I would say like a machine, man. It's just like you always keep playing very hard, but also you keep your dynamics around the kid depending on what you're playing, you know. And I used to watch different drummers doing the same thing. You know, old, old guys, you know, like Jason, um, uh, John Bonham, for example, he used to play that stuff. Right. And he was a powerhouse drummer, man. He was like revolutionary, right? Um, and then from then, you know, and I, I grew up, there is other guys that I, I look up to, then they have the same style, you know, they're always very powerful behind the kid, but they're also, they have dynamics, so they control things and, and they transmit um, these emotions. And I think it's funny to say, but true that you should transmit emotions to your kid. And the power and that passion, and every time that I try to play, I try to transmit that to people. Even if I'm playing on a gig or I'm doing a video, I'm trying to transmit that through the camera or through an audience, you know? So that's for me, power has drumming, you know? Power, you know, definition on your playing, um, and also keeping your dynamics, because you can be a powerhouse drummer and you can play pop or session, right. you know? Um, you can be a powerhouse drummer and play even jazz. It's, it's, you know, the definition is very, very... Like, would say very broad and um okay. and it's just, it's just it's just it's just you know how you manage your you know bolly rich for me he was a powerhouse bolly rich was a powerhouse drummer right he was right. super like powerful when the right time was for him to be powerful but when he had to play music he played music with the band so that's for me the main thing what defines powerhouse drumming and um and that's i think is one of my main i would say skills and something that i, I would say is is, is is part of my language as a drummer you know so okay yeah. okay great so we're all looking forward to that and uh, i would say we just start right in right so uh, yeah. i come back later on for the question answer session after the master class in roughly about yeah. 30 30 40 minutes okay yeah that sounds good christian so let's start with this in a bit see in a bit right so um Guys, thank you very much for joining again. I'm very, very glad you guys, you guys are here. So, I'm gonna play a track now. That's the first thing I wanna do, and then I'm gonna break down this track, or like at least I'm gonna try to tell you guys what uh, I play on the track. Um, we we'll get to the track, you know, the track big in a moment because I'm using some tracks, but I, I will explain to this, you know, this later to you, and I have a few challenges for you guys and. I want, you know, we all together push ourselves to be better. This is the whole aim of this. And I'm, I'm just thinking like everyone, um, if they're at home sitting, you have a drum kit or you have a practice pad, let's all join and let's all try to grow together. This is the main thing about this. We need to be, you know, a family. And this is a drumming family. And, you know, and we're, we're, we're a few drummers. The world needs more drummers, right? So, yeah, I'm going to play this track. Um, it's called Avengers. Yes, yeah, like the movie, um, but um, it's a very powerful track. And yeah, let's get into it. And once I finish playing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into into you know breaking down a few things that I play on the track and just it's, it's things that I usually play in other stuff as well. All right, so let's go.
All right. Okay. Maybe I'm a bit out of breath there, but I like to put a lot of power, as you can see, and I like playing very loud. Try to keep my dynamics in some power, but this is actually a very good play along, so you can develop certain skills on the key, right? Um, so I want to just, you know, I love linear drumming. That's main thing. Linear drumming is, I think, the foundation of what I am as a drummer, you know. We can name plenty of drummers. Uh, one, one of the guys that actually changed a lot of my playing ability on the kid with linear drumming, it was Mike Johnston. Uh, I've studied his book up and down. Um, he's a linear drumming book. And then he is, he is an incredible educator and he actually, uh, you know, he break down all these things on the kid in terms of how you can make it more musical. And we talk about musicality on the kid, which is very important. Playing the kid has to be one of those things that you need to feel like you're playing music. Even if you're chopping and doing like chops and, and, and sharing away, you know. Um, so yeah, I studied that book and I want to just get to you guys. I want to get to you with, with some things that I, I do. So basically, most of the, of the fills that I do, right, uh, independently of the timing, you want to use 170 BPM or slower tempos, regardless of that tempo. Um, I like to basically go to to six, sevens, eights. So that's that combination of of hits basically is you know seven stroke roll or or five stroke roll or six stroke roll. Um, that's part of one of the things I do. So I'm gonna show you guys a few of the things, and I'm gonna try to to break down these things that I use there. Right? I love cables by the way. So I have this beautiful cable here. And I do I do use it a lot, but what I do basically just placements, you know, placement on placements in the cowbell. So if I'm playing an exercise on the snare, I make sure I just displace it around the kid evenly, on the same time on the bar. If I want to move on the E or the end or the, you know, if I want to just move the stroke up and down on the same bar, I just make sure that this is as accurate as I can do it. So let me just go through a few exercises. I'm gonna turn on, uh, turn off the microphone and we'll go into that. One of the things I do is this. Yeah. That's like a triple form. It's kind of a triplet form, you know. Um, and I use this when I, you know, displays it around the kid. So, for example. I go in one as well. So basically, I go in one. So sometimes I do two. I did the final stroke, but I do one. So, for example. So this is one of the main exercises. Why I do that? Because I'm leading with my right hand. So the accents, it's like a, this is a five, but it's like a triplet form anyway. You know, it sounds like a triplet form. So what I'm trying to do is just trying to lead with my right. The accents are on my right, and I'm trying to ghost note my left. It's very hard to go to ghost noting on the left. I'm a left-handed, by the way, so that doesn't mean doesn't give me any credit or be to be better. But you yeah, have a certain ability to to do more ghost notes with my left easier than my right. Still, I've tried to work. I've been working on my right hand to be as, you know, strong and accurate as my left. Um, yeah. So basically, um, I'm gonna show you guys uh, the other thing that comes after that. You know, in the questions when the questions um, they come by, I'm happy to answer you if you have any doubts about this. Not a problem at all. So here we go. I'm gonna show you this again. Uh, the variation is a triplet form, but also I use the kick drum before the accent. So like that. Yeah, so basically, 
That's my accent there, right? And that's what leads me and gives me the that power. Here we go. I'm going to speed it up a little bit for you. Definitely, definitely, there were there were different variations there, right? But um, so when I combine this, that gives me an open book. For me, I call it an open book because at least I know how to move around the kit and be like, okay, I can move my hand to the right. I can move my hand to the you know, I can move my 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 my, my hand, the right hand into the hi hats or the toms and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and that's what Mike Johnston Johnston's book gave me. If I'm honest with you guys, it was basically. He gave this book, an open book, just opened my whole mind. And I remember I was living in Italy by, by then. And I remember sitting there, man, on the, on the, on the, on the garage of my, my mother-in-law. And I used to sit there, man, and just practice, practice for hours on an electronic kit. I didn't have any headphones there, so I couldn't even listen. It was very, very, like, scarce, like, <laughs> um, situation there. But I wanted to be better. And that's the whole thing here, guys. We need to encourage each other. We, if you want to be better, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, like um, if you want to, you know, um, play on on a on a on a very expensive kit, on a cheap kit. The, the fact here is that you want to to get better than the kit, and we all get better. So my my idea, my passion, and my drive it got me to to basically just try to play the best I could and try to be as better as I could be. Even I didn't have a drum kit and stuff at the time. Um, yeah, so here we go. I'm going to show you another variation, which is I'm going to start articulating and doing a bit of orchestration on the toms. And I'm going to try just to, 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 to break it down for you guys. So here we go. There were tons of variations there, but what what makes it very, you know, like I think dynamic is the fact that I'm just orchestrating my hands around the kit. So there is some sixes, some sevens there, right? And the kick drum. It's very simple. So if I'm playing up to speed, it's gonna sound something like this.
Um, I know it sounds like a very like complicated thing, but it's not. It's not complicated at all. So I'm gonna show you the combinations that I use for this type of of, of you know orchestration. There were some six and some seven, so I use six stroke row in here. That's a six stroke, and then I'll use a seven stroke roll on that linear fill. Well, I, say, I say it's not like a seven stroke roll, it's more of a you know, a feel in seven, so it's seven notes basically. Uh, here we go again. So these kind of fills are not that hard. It just requires practice, and that's pretty much it. Um, I'll take questions in terms of if you want to know anything about this. The other thing I want to touch is uh, some groove, some linear grooves that I do on the hi-hat, uh, with between the hi-hat and the snare. So I, I do a few combinations. Um, one of my major influences as well is, well, I really like him as a drummer. Um, it's Thomas Pridgen. And uh, when he used to play with the Mars Volta, he used to play this sick. Six, 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 six chops and, and grooves, and he was mental, man. He took the band to another level. So, and he used to play. He used to play his eighteen, and even twenty hats, like massive, like two crashes. Um, and I remember watching these these videos of him doing just some crazy grooves. There were some like uh, drama channel videos and performances he was doing. These massive hats, man. He's just like digging into that and doing some linear stuff. Very, very groovy, very powerful. He's another great example of power uh, power house drummer. Um, so let me show you a few of those. I'm gonna go a bit fast, and then. I'll just slow it, slow it down for you, all right? Give me a sec, here we go. So that's a great example of combination. I use a lot of I use a lot of six, for example. I can change the six the other way around. So I invert it between so going hi hat into the snare. Some sevens. So basically, I use very basic stuff, and when you you know speed it up, it sounds very good. I'm gonna try now 
to um, orchestrate a few things on the kit. I'm not gonna call it a drum solo. Um, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna orchestrate something. And if you have any questions, please uh, we wait until we jump into, into into some questions. I'm gonna be playing another track after that, so you guys can check uh, some of these um, things that I played here. How can I orchestrate? I put orchestrate this into the song, right? So here we go. I'm gonna show you a bit of that orchestration. So this is basically most of the things guys have shown you. I've orchestrated everything around the kid. Saying this, I'd say it's just a matter of placing the same feel of the rudiment, sorry, into each individual drum, cowbell, you want to call it, whatever. So for me, I would say there's some other great drummers that are very good at on linear. Um, but I think Mike Justin had this ability of put everything into my head very easy and orchestrating everything easier than, than other people. You know, I'm not saying I like there's great educators around the world, you know, uh, but he was that person that gave me that ability and that understanding of, of, these, of these things, you know. Um, yeah, I'm going to play another track. This track is called Terminator, yeah, and it's got Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice. I'll be back. <laughs> It's funny, but it's great. Like, you know, I, I'm going to talk about Carlin in a second, his whole, you know, shed tracks. I'm going to talk about that, you know, further on. But uh, he's a great guy, and he's, uh, he's been one of those guys super supportive with the drum community. He cares a lot about all this. So, um, and he's been, you know, put, putting tracks out there for free for every single drummer to learn and be better. And I have a lot of respect for that guy, man. He's a fellow Sabian and Dorsey as well. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna play this track called Terminator, uh, and it's got um, it's very intense, it's very powerful. I hope you guys like it. I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do on this one? I'm gonna let it run with the metronome, right? So you can hear how I go up and down on the bars. Sorry if I for the mess ups or something. If I do something, I always pray from the heart and try to make sure you guys, you know, have some some tools for you to work at home. So here we go. Listen to me very carefully.
think that deserves a second run. I'm gonna do a second run because I do love this track. Here we go again. Let's play it again. Listen to me very carefully. I think I left my microphone on, so it might have been a bit distorted. Listen, I made a few mistakes there, you know. Um, there's some, it's a tricky part with some accents. The first time I played it, well, and the second time it was a bit fakey, but you know, we're humans, man, and sometimes that happens. And that's the thing, you know, I never stopped, you know, digging into the song and, and, and trying to go into it and trying to, you know, play it better. Uh, what if, let's try to give it a, it's one minute tracks, you know, so you have one minute. So you can do basically, you can groove, you can chop, and you can finish the song. So the first part is very groove related, and then after it gives time for you to start building that up. So here we go again, I'm gonna try it again. I feel, I feel, I'm, you know, we're gonna try to push each other here, so I'm gonna push myself right now. Listen to me very carefully. So I, I same mistake, you know, and I've played this track several times. Let's try again. It is definitely a challenge of a track to play. Very challenging. For me, it's been challenging, you know? Uh, and I think uh, that's one of the things, you know, we, we just try to push ourselves and try to be better, you know? Uh, the first time I played it, it was good. 
sometimes when you overplay things or overthink too much, might not be the same. Um, but saying that, that's where we're here for, you know, to get better. And uh, I'm one of those guys, you know, that needs a few takes to get, like when I do my recordings, I need a few takes so I can dig in into the thing and just make sure everything sounds tight, you know. Um, but yeah, this is the Sterinator, and it's a great track. Um, by Colin McCuller um, in Shed Tracks, guys. Thank you very much. You, you guys are awesome. Colin is a great guy. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I was using here on the um, on this actual, let's say on this on this on this track, I did I did a few different combinations with the stack. So I want to show you these guys. After these, I'm gonna jump onto some double kick drum stuff that I want to show you, and then we jump into questions. Here we go. So these combinations are basically like this. It's very easy. Trust me, it's the same thing over and over, just I'm looping it faster, again. Okay? I'm gonna slow, I'll slide down a little bit for you. a seven. Here we go and displacements again.
I was doing sevens basically there, not displacing everything. Sounds very fat, but um, but yeah. Sorry, David, to interrupt, uh, but I see that little battery battery sign coming oh. up in your camera. Yeah, let me change, let me change the battery. Just Sorry, guys, about you. that. Two seconds. I think that should be all right, right, Christian? Yes, all good. Back in the stream. All okay. good. Right, guys. So this is basically, sorry about that. I've charged all my, my batteries, so I'm ready. Um, yeah, so that's basically seven. So let's go back to the sevens. I'm going to do briefly, and then we're going to jump into into the actual um, into the actual double kick drum parts, and then we jump into questions, all right? Here we go. Yeah, I use the same seven here, seven there, and some six in displacements. Displacement. So it's, it's not that hard, actually. It's once that little chip in your head opens up, you can start blazing, man. It just when opens up. So I'll take questions after. So let's go into some double kick drum exercises that I have for you guys. Um, that's what, It's been one of my biggest challenge, challenges, I think, is double kick drum. It's quite hard. And... Uh, um, and for me, it was a challenge, you know. There's there's guys like Chris Turner, which is a freaking machine. Uh, he can just play like, yeah, like a machine, man. He's just the machine. He's not human. Uh, so, yeah, but I have some basic things that, you know, help me, like, developing the skills, the speed and endurance you needed. So one of the first ones is doing 16 notes on the kick drum. And I do a few displacement here, keeping, um, you know, a quarter notes or 16 notes on uh, a china or... Um, or a, or a cowl in this case, or, or the stack. Um, and, and I just keep that and start doing variations. That gave me a lot of independence between my, my limbs, you know, and to my hands and my feet. Um, so here we go. I'll show you some exercises for that, guys. Here we go. Five on the on the hands. That's another one. That's another one. I go like this. Same five with a variation. Okay, because that 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 for me gave me a lot of more like the dexterity on my on my limbs. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, keeping 16 is like... 
for too long is a bit hard. So you need to do. So for me, my my brain it works like you know. I added some extra beats, like you know, a groove on top, and that gave me more like freedom, more like like inner peace. So I could just like speed it up and get more power out of it. Uh, here we go. Believe it or not, this is like a songo type of thing, so it's like that. If you guys realize how the quarter notes always, they're there, they never go away. And that's one of the things that helped me, believe it or not, to keep my dexterity like you know between my feet and my hands. So here we go, the exercise again. All complete. That's a basic 16s uh, quarter stories on the here on the cowbell on the china, and I start moving my hands around. So here we go again. So yeah, that's that's the approach I do. I can, you know, um, I don't want to, you know, I go into into too much into it. But um, I would say is basically keeping your quarters and alternating with your other hand like this. Of course, lower tempos for a start are better, and then you speed it up, you know, depending on how comfortable you are. So, all the well, other stuff that I do is I do three quarters. So, three quarters is what I'm talking about. Three, four on the snare drum. Uh, three quarters. <laughs> uh, three, four on the snare drum, and I keep the sixteenths on the floor. And and that actually came up uh, when I used to play with a metal core band called Avira, and they gave me an EP for me to learn. It was pretty difficult. And one of the songs had this three, three, four on it on the hands, but down there is 16. So it's 135 BPM, but I'm going to play maybe a little bit faster.
So that's for 16s. And the other thing I practice quite often is 16 triplets. So 16 triplets on the kick drum. And that gives me a lot of uh, the groovy side of things. So for example, if I apply it to a groove, So yeah, that's a 16 triplet. So basically it's just it's like if you were doing a groove like this. Think of a basic rock, you know, groove, but adding the 16 triplets of the kick. Uh, 60 triplets, of course, try, I'd recommend start with 90 BPM. So if you, do, if you double up, it's 180. Good luck. And go like that for a while, man, without playing anything on the drum key, go like that. The other thing I do, so warm up is I use 16 on each foot and I alternate, something like this. So basically I go 16s, then alternate the other, the other foot, and so on. With a basic rock groove. And then 16s on the kick, keeping the same groove up. Yeah, so basically, that's one of the exercises. Um, to finish, and we jump on the questions, 
I'll play a last track for you guys. And we jump into questions with Christian. Just one more track. And and we're done. And we're done with the with the with the plane. And I'll jump and ask and, and answer everything you guys might like to ask. So here we go. Sorry, the travel's out of place. My apologies. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your wow, time, guys. Right? Wow. Great. Thanks, David. <laughs> yeah. We already got a lot of questions about your simple setup and your, your drum kit. Can you oh, yeah. walk us through your, your, your kit there, please? A hundred percent. Yeah. So here we've got uh, these are Pearl uh, Masters uh, Maple Complete in Antique Burst. It's a limited edition drum kit. I'm a Pearl artist um so yeah this has simon and frank jacobs from pearl they've been extremely kind and, and very 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 nice guys very supportive so i got this kit from them uh, basically the sizes of this kit is actually a shell pack it's all maple shells so six ply maple on each tom um very very warm very very extremely warm very lovely kid um some for, for, believe it or not i play some references uh, per reference which is a bit higher level and I think this 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 maple um, complete are, are incredible. Like for the price point and stuff, is is insane. Uh, the sizes of this kit is um, ten rectum. I have a twelve, but I, I don't have it here. Uh, a fourteen and a sixteen. They're standard sizes, so it's, it's ten by seven. There's a fourteen. Uh, there's a fourteen by fourteen, and there's a sixteen by fourteen. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the sizes. And the twelve that I have here is a twelve by eight. 
Um, here, it's very special one. is a is a is a pearl a few snare. It's a it's a very very nice like a piccolo snare, and I clamped it there with with some hardware. Here you can see the clamp. There's actually a symbol boom arm, and I just clamped it there. And this is a this is a pearl fuse. If I'm not wrong, this is a ten by by four by five by five. I think it is. Yeah, pearl fuse. Frank or Simon or whoever a pearl wants to correct me, please do. Um, that's in terms of shells. Um, the most important thing, of course, is symbols. Um, uh, yeah, I've been playing Sabian for a while now. What I love about Sabian, with all honesty, is the craftsmanship behind the symbols, man. It's, it's just, they're so buttery, man, and the articulation of the symbols are something beyond expectation of any drummers, and I've played all the brands you want, and I think Sabian, they've got this, this special, I think it's because you have these guys in New Brunswick in the factory, they're hammering the symbols themselves and putting every single detail, every single love into every, each symbol, so you can feel that when you play it, man. Um, so I'll run through the symbols I have, man. Um, I've got, um, this is a HHX 14-inch groove hats. Uh, this is my favorite hats. Uh, they're insane, insane. 14-inch. Sometimes I'll play 15s, um, uh, uh, HHX um, complex series. I have a 15-inch of those, and I have Evolutions uh, 14 as well, but this is far, by far my favorite ones. I've got here on my first crush, it's a 19-inch Evolution. They were called Signature Line, which is legendary. Evolution Crash, a 19-inch. Uh, here are my splash. I have a different splashes. Um, I love the air splashes, and I love the air splashes as well. But this one in particular, I started to play it, and, and, and I was like, you know, I was digging it, but because I like more the air splash and the air splashes. But when I started playing this thing, man, and, you know, the more you dig into it, the nice and crisp and buttery it feels. This is an AAX splash, just on its so traditional. Here we go. Here we've got, we've got I've, I've got a mini stack. I think I didn't play this stack, man, and the whole during the whole the whole thing. But this sounds like this, and that's a beautiful stack. Is that sometimes when I do like some covers and stuff like hip hop, I use stuff like I play stuff like this, for example, on here with that stack. Let me show you briefly. Yeah, it's very crispy. It's like a little hip hop setup. I have the kick and the, the little like stack. This is a max stack, mid stack. It's a mid because he's got a high and low. This is the mid stack. Mike Pornoy's sig uh, max stack signature. Um, this is, I think, one of my favorite rides. This is a new release for from Savian 2020. This is an H checks thing ride. Uh, this thing is, what can I say, man? It's just beautiful. I love crashing and like who doesn't, you know, <laughs> crashing on, 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 on a ride. So it's got everything. It's got the articulation out. It's got the ping on the bell, which is you can play anything you like and you can bash it like, you know, and crash it as much as you like. I've got other rides like the double A bash ride, which is also insane. And I saw Ray Luzier playing that, playing that ride a long time ago and it was my, one of my favorites. And uh, the Groove uh, ride as well, I have that one and that's very nice. But this is by far my favorite. So let me just play it on its own. You can see the bell. And the crash. The good thing about this symbol, man, is that like it, it just shuts down very, very fast. The fact that it decays quite fast, so that means I can I can articulate back into it, and it doesn't got, get too washy. So I love this. This this is a new release, Sabian as well. Like you know, killing it. Um, so here, the next symbol is a combination. It's a stack. Usually, I have um, which I don't have today because I decided to go with the stack combination, but I have an AAX Aero Crash 20 inch, which is, is insane, insane symbol. I've seen some drummers playing it as well. But in this case, I have this stack, and the combination is a basic HHX China, just standard. And in the bottom, I have an Evolution, same Dave Wick signature, 18 inch. And it sounds like this, very, very cutting, especially if you play metal, um, and it's very good for that. Yeah, I love that stuff, man. I don't get it too tight or too loose, just like in the middle. And lastly, I've got here on my on my um, right hand side is a HHX Extreme Crash, a 20 inch. So I have a 1920. I like matching symbols between 1920 or 1819s, and this is a 20. It sounds like this. It's also it's a freaking beast of a symbol.
killing, man. I love I love these symbols so much, and uh, I've got a, a few more depending on what I'm playing. But these represents what I am now in terms of my personality, and that's one of the things I like about Seven. You can you can express yourself with pers your personality as a drummer. They've got the tools for you as a musician, a musician to have that on your kit. Um, so that's in terms of um, of that. All the hardware on this kit is, uh, is Pearl uh, One Zero Thirty series, and my pedals are uh, Redline Eliminators or New Redline Eliminators. There's like a like like uh, all red lines, but this is the new red lines. Um, the hi hat is um is um is a pearl um 2050 um double leg hat um hat like hi hat stand. Um, yeah, and I forgot. Uh, I'm gonna get into the, um, and the yeah the stands are like uh, old BC 103 uh, B uh, 1030, which is like the you know high end pearl, very very sturdy, and I have the short booms here and some clamps, which is the longer version, so it gives it more space so I can move it. Closer to the what I needed. This cable is a salsa thing. No, it's just a standard cable Latin percussion. Um, my sticks. I play. I'm a Vator artist as well. Uh, if someone at Vator is watching this, I'll send you much love to Chad Randolini and Ivan came from Vator. Also very supportive in everything. I play Vator um, Fusion Acorn sticks, and the great thing about this is the perfect balance between a five A and a five B. I say. I used to play the classics 5B. I did a video, to, uh, you know, about them with Vator, but these sticks are for me just perfect balance, not too heavy, not too light. In terms of heads, I played, you know, I've changed it sometimes, but here on the top, I've got Emperor Ebony's on all my on my toms, Emperor Ebony's, and at the bottom, I've got Clear Ambassadors. Um, on the on the snare drum, I use a Clear, just a standard Ambassador, and in the bottom head is an Hazy Ambassador. Uh, funny enough, I have an Evans G1 on here on this on this little snare drum. It's a bit drier and crispier, so I have an Evans. I don't have any, you know, if it sounds good, sounds good, but I like, I like my ream in general. Um, yeah, and the last thing, because uh, in terms of gear, because everyone asked me about this, I've got tons, millions, I don't know how many questions about my snare drum. I've, I've owned, I own a few, but this one is just getting the tension. It's getting the tension mode of, instead of my playing, people look at the snare. This is a Pearl Sensiton beaded brass, 14 by six and a half. It's brass, so it's very crispy, very articulate. I tune it a bit high, I like high, high tuning not very low um, and it sounds as you can see crispy yeah very crispy man it's, i love this thing it does it just on my on my equipment that i play in terms of microphones some people have been asking me on social media so i'll be very brief about that in this case, because I was, I'm doing the master class, I've been putting different microphones. There's E604 Sennheisers, Beta 57A on the snare, a D6 uh, kick drum microphone. Um, uh, I don't have an overheads because what I have here is a beautiful Yamaha E8010, and I have it on my kick drum. I'm scrapping it now. Is there is a stereo microphone which captures all my drum kit, and I've got the module here which I set up everything. I dial it in the module. This the module. This is actually works as a trigger for the kick drum. And also as the microphone, and on the this little snare, I have a trigger, the DT50S Yamaha trigger here on in on the main snare drum. Guys, triggering is just for enhancing your sound. Triggering is not for for like you know like replacing the natural sound of your snare. So I blend it in. It's not taking over the sound of my snare drum. So let's I'm, I'll be very clear about that. And here on the module, I have uh, uh, it's got like an effect, so you can select the effect. Basically, it gives you pre-mixed drums, which is insane. And I have uh, the, the speed metal setting on here. And I've got a bit a tad of reverb. And then um, and I have the triggers. I have some samples on, on each snare drum. Very below the mix because I like this, the snare to just pop up as this, the sound itself. And it, you know the results are insane because you don't need, you can connect it to your phone and record through an app and you're doing a track or whatever. And so it's very, very easy to record. Uh, and, but today I've been putting everything to my desk, which is behind here. It's a Q24 uh, LN and Heath. And because I tried, I tried to make a better mix so you guys can have a better audio quality. Uh, how, and I hope you, you did have it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's all my gear. I think I've run through everything. That's it, Christian. Great, thanks for the information and the kind words. Thanks, David. No, so, no, no, no. Uh, get a question here from uh, from Evan Evandro Jr. If you uh, use blast beats at well, and uh, how you make this uh, without sound so mechanic? Right, uh, I'm not a big, you know. You should ask, ask this question to Chris Turner. He's the blast beat guy, number one, <laughs> or George Colley, as you know. There are some great guys that can blast beat like like crazy. I'm not into. I can play some of them. But I'm not a blast beat in terms of metal. I'm I try to groove as much as I can. Like I can do blast beats, 
uh, to a certain speed. Uh, I can just show you briefly. Give me a sec. Like I'm not the best. Uh, I'm not, I don't practice it too much, but I have like an intention. I'm more of a let's say metal groovy. I like grooving more, but yeah, that that would be that would answer that. Yeah. I got a question about your um, band projects uh, and and current bands you're working working with, uh, yeah. Live Avenue. Do you have uh, current recording plans or touring plans? Anything for next year coming up? Uh, we had a, a tour to Denmark and Sweden. I remember. And it was down, but all the COVID-19 happened, so we had to stop it. We did record a video clip, um, and it, that did very well on YouTube. It's doing very well. It has some streaming. And we're just we're writing music at the moment. Everything's very steady in terms of writing and, com and composing packs. Uh, Peter is composing everything with Claudia. And as soon as everything goes back, we, we probably, probably just like record another video clip and do another song. Um, and that would be that would be the plans for now. In terms of touring, everything's very in the air now. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen, but yeah, we're making music, you know, with with love and, and dedication. Yeah. So, and and are there any are there any uh, any projects or any any stuff that you're working on currently? On yeah, um, well, basically, it's my Instagram, man. Uh, my Instagram, it's my 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 like my I say my my portfolio. I love playing to tracks man i always loved that since i started playing drums so that's like main point of attention i posting like twice or three times a week i'm posting there um i'm i'm I have, i'm wearing actually this hoodie by a great guy called uh, crispin uh, matthew from from florida he sent me some kindly some clothing uh, his brand and i'm i'm working on some some of my own branding the cardinal hoodies and, and some t-shirts which i don't want to talk too much about but uh, you know i hopefully i can release it before the end of the year and the last thing i'm working on which is very exciting i'm gonna release because everyone has been asking so much about my drums and snare drums and they're they're very like that uh with my very good friend in, in, in leeds his name um It's, it's one of you know, I've, I've done like uh, loads of, of of videos with him and collabs and my Instagram feed. His name is Justin Woodward. He runs his own studio and Jake Jason Reed, which is a great friend of mine here in, the, in London. We're recording my first sample library, so I'm gonna do a sample library in collaboration with with Justin Woodward and um, and um, and my and my mate Jake Jason Reed. We're gonna be recording all my kids, all my snare drums, and we're gonna we're gonna give it to, to people, man, because I I think is. Is, is it's time for for to put my sounds out and some producers or drummers that they work with needy they can use that so yeah that's a big big thing coming and i'm recording in september and, and i'm very looking forward to share this with you guys yeah that would be my project so far right yeah it sounds sounds exciting so uh probably one more question before we wrap up for today so what's yeah. your, actually your, your practice routine so what is actually stuff for for warm up like warm up exercises or when you when you yeah. start Yeah. Uh, okay. Basically, very simple. I start with with something which I love. I play to tracks. Unfortunately, because of copyrights and stuff like that, I couldn't I couldn't play to other tracks that I usually play and practice. So I start with some tracks playing, especially very groovy. So I start with a groove that I love about a song. It's, it's a very nice groove. I'm gonna show it to you very briefly. This is groove. This is the first thing I do when I started, and then after that, I jump into some like you know orchestration. So I'm gonna play both. Their groove and orchestration. This is my basically my, my warm up routine.
Yeah, so basically I do stuff like that, play some grooves, some songs, and I do some orchestration, and I feel warmed up. The other thing I do at home, I have a Pro Logic pad, and I have very 3S sticks, which is very thick sticks by Vator. And I, this pad is like similar to the Reflex, you know, and then has no rebounds at home. I do like six stroke rolls, seven stroke rolls, five stroke rolls, single, uh, single strokes, double strokes, paradiddles. I use a Tommy Igo warm up routine, which is insane. It, it makes your hands way better. So I'll practice that at home maybe twice a week when I have time and just do that and then come twice on the kit and do that and do my content and et cetera, et cetera. Great. So David, thank you very much for taking your time and doing the masterclass. It was really, really interesting. Really good stuff. Thank you. Christian, Christian, thank you. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Christian and guys at Sabian, thank you very, very much for the opportunity. I'm very humbled uh, for doing this. And I hope if you guys want to catch me and want to see my Instagram, the Cardinal underscore Cardona, um, I, I'm pretty sure yeah, Christian put a banner with my email or my just just write me and I'm happy to answer answer everyone questions and doubts. And we encourage each other. It's about growing each other. This is the main thing. So, yeah, thank you very much, uh, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, David, and thanks everybody for watching. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.